Hello, Joy Tribe. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Joy Villa. I'm an author, speaker, singer, songwriter, and actress. I love speaking up for those I love and helping others live a more joyful life. I'm the host of the podcast, The Joyful Life on Spotify and YouTube, and of the upcoming book I am the author of, The Five Pillars of Joy. Five Pillars of Joy are faith, freedom, finance, fitness, and family. And you can pre-order that book, I'm very excited to announce, on joyvilla.com. So just click book, uh, it should be there, Five Pillars of Joy, and you can click that and pre-order your copy. It'll cover all the five pillars of joy, how we can have joy. I have a very personal journey with traveling and finding my way through a landscape in rough times, just as we have right now. So I decided to do a podcast called The Joyful Life and create a book out of this concept of finding joy and having joy really be personified. And I found out that you must have those five elements all in accordance with each other, all working in harmony in order to be truly joyful. So, and of course it helps that my name is Joy Villa. <laughs> so today I want to talk about family, specifically relationships. And many of you guys who listen to my podcast, The Joyful Life, available on Spotify and YouTube, will know that I love to talk about feminine energy, masculine energy. I did an Instagram Live where I talked about relationships, and many of you said, please talk about this subject more. So that is what this is in response to. I actually have a book I want to read some um, passages from in a little bit, and that is 100 Ways to Love Your Husband. I know, right? The Simple Powerful Path to a Loving Marriage. It's by Lisa Jacobson, and she is an author. She's a believer, Christian author, speaker, and founder and host of the Club 31 Woman. Dot com. Powerful online community of Christian women authors who write weekly on the topics of husband, home, family, and biblical truths. So she's also the author of 100 Words of Affirmation Your Husband Needs to Hear. I don't often see women supporting their husbands in this way. This is why I love using my platform as a Christian woman, as a believer, as a as an artist, as a traveler, as a speaker. Truly, I see that my path towards more family and more focus on bringing light and love to this world is real. And it's something I want to do. So I'm really excited, Joy Tribe, to read some passages from this, which we will in just a moment. But first, I want to set the stage for you. Why this video? Well, it's a response to the dating market right now. I want to tell you something, beloveds. If you're not dating to get married, you're dating to break up. So why talk about husbands? Why talk about wives? For that very fact, in today's society, we demonize feminine women, we demonize masculine men, we lift up promiscuity, we make it seem like, oh, this slut culture is really how it's supposed to be. And let me tell you, it's a slut culture for both men and women. And by slut culture, I don't mean how high is your body count or, you know, how you dress, although the way you present yourself is extremely important. And I know that there's a huge amount of body count things. And by the way, if you're an older fashion listener, you might not know what the heck I'm talking about. I'm not talking about how many people you've deleted from this world, but body count is how many people you've slept with. Ugh, your number, right? I just hate that there's a focus on that. First of all, I'm against promiscuity. I'm against sleeping around because it hurts both men and women. It hurts your heart. At the end of the day, if you are not dating seriously, you're going to get hurt. You're going to hurt others. So saying all that, I don't also believe in demonizing someone or antagonizing someone for their past. A lot of people have player paths. A lot of people have lived a life of decadence and made mistakes and been promiscuous. That doesn't mean there isn't forgiveness and love. And this isn't a religious podcast by any means. This is something where I want to make sure people know a spiritual connection, an emotional connection, a soulful connection with someone you are romantically pursuing will make all the difference in the end of the world. It is about connection. Ladies, I want you to be in your feminine, not chasing men, not going after men, worrying, being antagonizing, agonizing, thinking, oh, I, what did I do? And uh, should I do this? And should I wear more of this? And should... All of that is a worry, worry mentality. It's boy energy. It's not feminine energy. Resting in your feminine means you are confident, you're calm, you're composed, 
You're mature enough to recognize a good man when he comes your way. And you also are ready to be his peace. You're ready to be calm. You're ready to observe what he's bringing to the table to make your decision based on that. And men, I want you in your masculine energy, okay? I want you ready to protect and provide. I want you ready to show this woman that you mean business and to also be looking at her and seeing how she receives you. Men give, women receive. Now, of course, in a relationship that's balanced and, you know, you're going to be also be giving in your own way, ladies, you know, this isn't something, by the way, I don't believe it's 50-50, it's 100-100, but we give and receive in different ways. I'm just speaking about the courtship part, the dating part, which I have high expectations for myself in the dating market and I would hope for you, Joy Tribe. I want us to bring it back to the old fashioned traditional ways. I am a traditional woman. I expect my man to protect and provide. And he has every right to expect me to follow his lead and to be his peace and to nurture. That's feminine energy. Remember the sperm swim to the egg. The egg doesn't move. She's immovable. Many sperm swim to the egg and only one gets inside. <laughs> So truly use nature as your barometer for how relationships should be. I don't believe in men chasing though, but pursuing. Be a man who pursues your woman's heart, pursues her intellect, pursues her mind. And ladies, make sure when you recognize, you recognize that a man who is pursuing you, who is good, who may not be Mr. Heartthrob, he may not be six feet, six figures, all of this six pack, Okay, a lot of us put so much focus on the outward experience and it has very little to do with a relationship, a real relationship. Because let me tell you, when you are married, and I hope that many of you want to be married, it's also okay if you want to be single, if you don't want to be married, if you want to be in a partnership, but let's just say for those seeking marriage or a very long-term stable partnership, if you want to bring children into this world, you absolutely have to be married. I mean, there are exceptions to the rule, but I'm telling you, marriage is not dead yet. Many people don't want to be married because they're scared, because they see it fail, because they see many bad instances of it. But having grown up in a traditional relationship, having seen my mom and dad, my dad being the masculine provider, my mom being the feminine nurturer, I tell you, being raised around that was everything for me. It made me feel so womanly and so strong and so appreciated having been raised with that, seeing how a man treats a woman and how a woman treats a man. So I digress. I don't want this video to be too long, but if you like this, please remember to like and subscribe. Make sure that you check out my new book that is releasing soon. You can pre-order it, The Five Pillars of Joy. Like and subscribe this channel. I want to remind you, we're not ending yet, but if you like this kind of content, please let me know. It means the world to me, Joy Tribe. That's why I did this video, because you said, please, we want more of this. And I want to use my public persona and my platform to speak on the things I believe in. So if you like this, leave a comment down below. All right. So... That's a very broad, open viewpoint on relationships. I do believe that you must date to get married, date for long-term partnership and eventual marriage, and make sure your spirituality is in the center of it. Make sure God is in the center of that relationship or it won't work, and that you're facing each other, excuse me, that you face together outward, not each other. <laughs> if you are facing each other, you have, let me show you, this or this face the world together that's how a relationship should be so i covered a lot of different topics very quickly but mainly i wanted this video to set up the point that relationships today are doomed to failure if you run them by modern standards only a traditional upbringing can really bring children into this world we see marriages falling apart moment after moment celebrity marriages Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith, we see her embarrassing him constantly. We see the Kardashians. We see plenty of marriages that are non-traditional. And by traditional, I mean the man in his masculine and the woman in her feminine. Now, even if you're a same-sex couple, you're, one person's going to be masculine and one person's going to be feminine. And that's how it's going to work because these are two contrasting harmonious energies. They complement each other. 
And that's what I would want for you, Joy Tribe, is that you would be able to find your energy and be able to find your other half and be able to create a beautiful whole while still being a whole person yourself, not ma making your whole identity or basing your whole identity on this other person, but achieving a status where you are complete and whole as you, but you come together and find that other person. So this one is a little more focused on husbands and wives because I think this book is incredible and I do want to be a wife and a mother one day. So I like to bring love to those traditional relationships. All right. So oh, this is perfect. This says, I just turned, I said, God, show me what page you want me to turn to, but be sure he's your best friend. Invest in your friendship, find activities you both enjoy and spend time together. Do the kinds of things friends do. Talk, laugh, work, and play. Share your heart with him. Talk about your hopes and dreams and ask about his too. Decide in the beginning that you are going to stick together until the very end. You're both in this relationship for the long haul. Till death do you part. Oh, so beautiful. And I am a hopeless romantic. I love this. And the two shall become one flesh so that they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. That's Mark 10, 8 to 9. Okay, this is wonderful. So um, I'm going to be reading random pages from this book. Again, shout out to the author, Lisa Jacobson, 100 Ways to Love Your Husband. I think it's a beautiful book. You can just open it from, you know, any page and find beautiful, encouraging things like that. And I encourage you to utilize my message into your life. If you are married, make sure you make your man your best friend. You, and this can be work, working for women too as well. So husbands, make sure your wife is your best friend. Because I tell you, so many people are not together. They're passing up the good person, the person that's right next to them, because they're the nice guy. Ladies, especially you, do not pass up the nice guy. You should be with your best friend. Okay, he makes you feel safe and comfortable and good. Why are you going for the bad guy that's going to break your heart? Oh, is it because he's shorter than you? Girl, I love a short king. Is it because he's younger than you? Nothing wrong with that. Is it because, oh, he works with you or he doesn't thug around or look tough or look like a rock star or whatever reason that you're not in a relationship with him? I mean, many times all we have to do in order to change the friendship into a sexual relationship and therefore potential marriage is a decision. Look at that person, look at your friends, because there's the connection there. That emotional connection is what is going to carry you through when you are married five years from now and the romance and the hormones have sort of died down and you're pregnant and you've got hemorrhoids. Who's going to put that cream on your butt? It's not going to be the six, two Chad with six abs, six pack abs. I mean, if you can find a Chad that'll do that, that's fine. You know, Chad meaning like a big buff guy fine, great. But if you've passed up the good guys, the little pudgy guys, the nerdy guys, the shorter guys, the seemingly, oh, he's just my best friend guys, ladies, if you've passed those men up, those are husband material. If you've passed those up and you're now whining, going, I have nothing to wear in a, in a closet full of clothes, that's what you seem like. You're spoiled and you need to stop. I want to tell women this every day. You're spoiled for choice. Back in the day, we all married our best friends or the children we grew up with, the, 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 the boy across the neighbor, the neighbor's yard, the farm, the farm hand across the street, you know, the next neighborhood over, you know, our parents, friends that have kids, like it was always a community thing. And those marriages lasted longer. At the end of the day, you have to find out what you want. Do you just want lust? Do you just want that kick, that dopamine rush, that serotonin feeling? Do you just want romance just to go on a few dates? Or do you want that plus a connection, plus humor, laughing, falling in love with your best friend? My mom told me well. She taught me well because my dad and my mom would laugh every single night. They could not go to sleep without laughing. I mean, they sort of fought like cats and dogs sometimes, but they always made it up. 
and they never went to bed angry. And you know what my mom told me the secret was? She said, Joy, marry your best friend. Marry your best friend. If you marry your best friend, you can't fall out of love with them because you have that foundation. Because love is a choice. You can be in love with someone when you choose to let yourself, let your heart go to them. And it's scary. You love your best friends. You love your family. You love your coworkers, maybe some of you. But to be in love with someone, that's a choice. So that guy friend of yours who's hanging around, always there, always available, kind, listening, <laughs> the shoulder to cry on when you break up from the guy that who broke your heart and cheated on you. Yeah, that's the guy you want to be with. Make sure you still go there with an open mind looking to see if it's correct, but go also with an open heart, please. I speak to ladies on this because I feel like ladies do this more than anyone. And gentlemen, if this is touching your heart too, you have that best friend, she's always around, she's cooking for you, she's there, take another look at her. She's opening her heart to you. She's laughing at your jokes. <laughs> In a world full of lonely people, why are we lonely? We have so many singles. Let your guards down. Let your fear dissipate. Stop having too high standards and expectations. Find your best friend. Fall in love with them. Commit to them and enjoy a beautiful, wonderful, delicious relationship and start a family. That's what keeps society going, family. I hope that you've liked this video and enjoyed this little tidbit and that you will check out and pre-order my brand new book. I'm so excited that you can pre-order it at joyvilla.com. It's the five pillars of joy, joyvilla.com. Pre-order it. You'll get a discount when you order it today from my website. The pre-order link will only be active for a short period. And make sure you take what I say to heart if you want to have a happy, joyful life or don't, but I'm here for you, Joy Tribe. I love you very much and I will see you in the next video. Leave a comment, like, subscribe. I'll check you later.